Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to Joyful Living. I am so excited to have you here today. I'm gonna be bringing you a health update and then I'm gonna be going into some detail about the recent procedure that I just had done. It was a DNC and a uterine ablation. And before you click off, um, if you're a guy and all of a sudden you just went, oh my gosh, I don't wanna hear this. I think that it might be a good thing for you to watch if you have a wife, if you have a daughter, if you have a mother, and I think we've covered most men with those three things, uh, because this is something that affects millions and millions of women. It's one of those things that we tend to suffer in silence about. We don't talk about it. I don't know why we don't talk about it, but my purpose today is not to share too much information or to be too graphic, but is more to normalize the conversation and also to inform for those of you that are looking at having this procedure uh, to kind of give you some firsthand information about what it's actually like and what is actually involved or at least what was involved for me. So I'm really glad that you're here. So first of all, as I am sitting here filming this with you guys, I had this procedure done exactly one week and one day ago. I just had my one week check yesterday and I kind of need to go back in the timeline to make sure you understand how we got here in the first place. Now I have struggled with heavy periods really my entire reproductive life. Uh, it's something that runs in my family. Fibroids are very hereditary and what they are is non-cancerous tumors that grow in inside of your uterus and they can grow for years and years and years. Full disclaimer, I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. I am just a person who had this procedure done. And when I went to do research on my own, because that's who I am, and if you've just found my channel because of this video, this may be who you are as well, I researched the heck out of everything. And I wanted to know everything there was to know about uterine ablation and fibroids. I am going to put a couple of YouTube channels down in the description box that are actual OBGYNs, but I was kind of surprised that most of the information I found was from medical doctors and very little of it was from actual women who had had the procedure. There are very limited options available to you while you are still in your childbearing years and uterine ablation is not recommended if you want to go on and have children. But um, I once I got, once the boys were, were born, um, the periods were still really heavy and I was ready for an alternative. I went in to see an OBGYN about the heavy bleeding. It was a man. Um, keep in mind, I was working full time and I was in a job where I was in a lot of very long meetings and I was at the point where I could not make it through a two hour meeting and it was really impacting my personal life and my work life and I was just done. Um, I believe at that point I was about 35 years old and I went in and I will never, ever, ever forget this as long as I live. He looked me straight in the eye and he said, you're 35. This is what happens. And it's going to get increasingly worse until you go through menopause, get used to it. And I left that appointment thinking two things. Number one, I'm never going back to that doctor. And number two, seriously, this is what we have to offer to women is get used to it. It was, it was not something that was acceptable to me. I did finally end up with a lovely female OBGYN. And by the way, male OBGYNs of the world, I know some of you are amazing. So this is, you can find a great male OBGYN. In my case, it was a woman that I was able to connect with and we actually ended up putting me, I was on an IUD for a while that helped and then I was on the pill for many, many years and that helped tremendously. So fast forward to now, I am 45 years old and they really don't like you to be on the pill much past 45. There's, there's some different thinking around that. My doctor did not want me on the pill anymore. So she said, let's take you off the pill and let's see how you do. Well, that worked for about two more years after that. I had pretty much normal cycles, totally manageable, nothing that a couple of Advil couldn't handle, nothing like what I had had before. 
And then we started the cycle all over again. See what I did there? Started the cycle all over again. And the heavy bleeding started and it started getting worse and worse and worse until finally, um, just a few months ago, I went for my regular checkup and my primary care physician shared with me that I was very anemic and that it was time to go to a specialist and to do something about this. And I knew I needed to, but in the midst of the global pandemic, I just, it was just one more thing on the list, but her showing me the numbers and me really thinking through how it was affecting my life made me realize I really needed to get this done. Ironically, I scheduled the appointment with my new OBGYN, who by the way is amazing. If you are in the Atlanta area and you're looking for the best OBGYN in the world, I've got her, so feel free to reach out. I'll give you her information. Um, it's Dr. Clay. Hi, Dr. Clay. Uh, anyway, during that time, I actually ended up having two periods that were about six days apart. I was feeling really the worst that I felt. So we moved from a situation that was inconvenient and uncomfortable to a situation that really was more of a, if not a medical emergency, certainly a medical urgency. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but it was it was highly medically important that I get this taken care of. Dr. Clay explained all of the options to me. She did an ultrasound there in her office. They did find a very large fibroid that was causing the increased bleeding. She did say, listen, we need to do something. And she presented me with the option of a DNC with a uterine ablation or of a hysterectomy. Now, generally speaking, I like to try the least invasive choice first. She was very honest with me, however, that uterine ablation has a 30% failure rate. So even though we were going to try it, that it may not work. And as I'm filming this, we don't know if it did work. We won't know. Well, initially we'll know in six to eight weeks, depending on if I end up having a period or not. But then even beyond that, sometimes it can fail. And, and by failing, I mean that I would start having very heavy periods again. What should happen is I should have no period at all or very very, very minimal bleeding during the time of my normal cycle. Um, everything else hormonally stays intact. 30% failure rate, non-invasive in that there's no cutting, but it would require, require general anesthesia. Um, it's not nothing. Anytime you have surgery with general anesthesia, you need to understand that it can be a big deal. Um, for me personally, I know that I don't do that great with general anesthesia. It always takes me at least a week to 10 days to start to feel better everybody's different. Like I heard from women when I first talked about this in my last video who were like, yeah, I had that done and I was back to work the next day. I knew that was not going to be me, that um, I just general anesthesia just messes with me and it is traumatic to your body. So I won't go into the uh, like medical details of what they actually do, although they do go in through your vagina, they go into your uterus, and then in my case, the uterine ablation is they heat saline to 90 degrees, and it stays, or I guess it circulates inside your uterus so that you no longer bleed, and also it should help with fibroids. Okay, so that's what is supposed to happen that is the procedure that I went in for. Now, what I'm gonna share with you next is kind of the timeline of the procedure itself, because when I was looking for information, that was what I wanted to know. There wasn't a lot of prep. I mean, I had to go in for pre-op. Obviously, I had to get a COVID test. Um, I had to get a pregnancy test. I had to do pre-op blood work, all of that. Um, and then nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before. And I showed up at the surgery center. Now in, in the situation with the great unpleasantness, I felt a little better about it being at a surgery center instead of at a hospital, because that means that everyone that's there has been tested for COVID. There's no one being treated for COVID at the surgery center. So I felt very comfortable. It's a little weird getting a surgical procedure in the middle of a global pandemic, but this thing just keeps going on and on, doesn't it? So we have to live our lives. We have to get these medical procedures done. So I felt very comfortable with all of their protocols, temperature taking, mask wearing, all of that, no problem. I got to the surgery center. Now here's where it was a little weird because Scott could not go in with me. They had him wait in the parking lot. 
My appointment was at noon for the surgery, so I got there an hour ahead of time. They took me back and they put in the IV. Now they took me back just to a little like pre-surgical area. The pre-op nurse was very, very kind, very sweet. I told her that I do have IV anxiety. Um, I've had some bad situations before. They numb your hand now before they do an IV, which they didn't used to do. And it is like a game changer. So she got my IV in, no problem. The anesthesiologist and I chatted. Um, her name was Lindsay. I'm sorry, I don't even know her last name because she introduced herself as Lindsay. I told her that one of my best friends is an anesthesiologist. Turns out Lindsay has done Run Disney. Turns out she was at Princess Half the same time that Sarah and Coral and I were there. By the way, if you want to go watch those videos on my Disney channel, which has nothing to do with this, you can go and watch that here. So um, Lindsay and I chatted forever, talked about running and talked about everything under the sun except for my surgery, which by the way, Lindsay, if on some weird event or chance you are watching this, Thank you, thank you, thank you, because you totally took my mind. Get me talking about running and you're gonna take my mind off of what's getting ready to happen. So at that point, um, I was almost ready for surgery. They gave me some relaxation medicine. They took me into the OR. I laid down on the table. I don't remember anything after that. I do remember saying something about my YouTube channel and I think I shared with them how much money I made last month on YouTube, which was a little awkward. <laughs> Not something I normally would share with people, but I do remember one of them asking me if I was famous. And then one other note on my surgical team, all women, it was like the power hour at the surgery center. I felt so well cared for, I cannot even tell you guys. So zero anxiety about any of that. It really went as well as it could possibly go. Um, Dr. Clay called my husband. He um, then pulled the car around and after I was able to wake up and at that point I was able to get myself dressed, get my shoes on, they put me in the car and I went home. Now, they had prepared me for a little bit of cramping basically the 24 to 48 hours directly after the ablation. I want to tell you, that was not a little bit of cramping. Um, I had extreme cramping. It felt more like labor pains, but without the break in between. It was really bad. Um, I was actually on the floor crying and Scott called the doctor and said, you know, I had already taken, they had given me 800 milligrams of ibuprofen and I was taking uh, Tylenol with codeine and I had only taken one or hydrocodone. And uh, he called, he's like, she is not doing good. They said, okay, give her one more um, hydrocodone. They did that, that really did help. And then I was on a schedule where I was taking the 800 milligrams of ibuprofen mixed in with the hydrocodone, which by the way, I hate hydrocodone messes with my system. So I only ended up taking three of those total. Um, and I did have some stomach issues. So if you're gonna get this done, I highly recommend you starting some sort of a um, really gentle like stool softener or something like that so that all of, I don't need to go into any more detail on that, but that is a side effect a lot of people have after surgery. I'm one of those people. You just don't need to add insult to injury if you know what I'm saying. So that's my big tip. <laughs> Tips and tricks with Jen about how not to have stomach issues after surgery. So a couple of days I would say I was down. And again, I recognize that I am not um, the toughest person physically. I'm very tough mentally, but when it comes to, I mean, I back when I worked full time, I would even take the rest of the day off if I had a dental procedure. Like there's something about my body, I'm very, very sensitive, and I just don't bounce back from things like that. So I knew I was in for several days, which was why I took the big break from my YouTube channel. So again, thank you to everyone for being so understanding that I had to take that long break. So after all of that, um, I then had another probably two to three days of still not feeling myself. You do have a little bit of bleeding, a little bit of discharge that's gonna be going on. Your doctor will prepare you for all of this. Um, you do have some restrictions. Um, she didn't want me doing any serious exercise. I was cleared to do any walking that I wanted to do. Um, I did do my ballet, which I think was actually really, really good for me because I do think movement you know, aids and healing. Um, but anytime I would overdo, I would find myself getting cramped up. And even like the last couple of days, I'm not quite back, as I said at the beginning, to being able to do everything um, like I normally do, but I am 95% of the way there. So at this point in time, 
I am beyond happy that I had the procedure done. Um, a lot of you reached out and said this was a procedure that was recommended to you, but you were scared. You were scared of the general anesthesia, you were scared of the recovery and all of those things. And any surgery has risk. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a girl who made this decision. But I can say I am very, very happy that I took that step and decided that I just didn't wanna live that way anymore. Because although I was anemic, was it going to kill me? No, but girls, that is no way to live your life. Um, and if you are finding that your cycles are so heavy and so painful that it is really disrupting your daily life, don't let a doctor tell you just to get used to it. Be proactive, find a doctor that will listen to you and figure out how you can improve your quality of life because you really should not have to live with several days out of every month where you are just out of commission and you're not able to do what your family needs, you're not able to do what the world is requiring of you and you're not able to be your best self. And it's, it's just not acceptable to me how many of us just let it go and don't take care of it and we don't take that step and take really excellent care of our bodies. So that's why I wanted to share today. You know, on Instagram, I was like, you guys think this is TMI? I don't care. I don't think it's TMI. I think it's exactly right, I. <laughs> It's exactly the right amount of information because we need to have all the stories we can in order to be well informed to make good decisions for ourselves and for our health. And there really isn't anything I can think of in your life that is more important than that. So make yourself a priority. If you have any questions for me, again, I'm not a doctor, but if they're just like procedural questions or if you're thinking of getting it done, I am an open book. So you can either put that in the comments below. You're welcome to reach out to me through Instagram, through instant message. I will get back to you there if I can. And um, I hope that you will subscribe to the channel. I don't always talk about this kind of stuff. I talk about all different kinds of stuff, but um, I am actually honored um, to be able to share my story with you. And um, I hope you found it helpful. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and share it with a woman that you love. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy. Bye-bye.